Hi, and welcome back to Broadsheet Melbourne Around Town. If this is your first time here, don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you never miss a video. I'm Katja Buckdall, Broadsheet's Editorial Director and the host of this 10-minute guide to Melbourne. Sandra Foti is the woman behind Piccolina, which is one of Melbourne's favourite and best gelati spots. She didn't begin in gelati. She did eat a lot of it growing up with her father, who used to make it at home. And one day she decided to leave graphic design, go to Italy, learn the craft of making gelato, came back to Australia, and seven stores later, we've got Piccolina. Sandra is here with us in the studio to chat about a really exciting series, the third of its kind, that is about to start at Piccolina. Welcome, Sandra. Thanks for having me. So tell us about this this series, which basically is a collaboration with eight of Melbourne's best chefs. Yeah, it is an epic collaboration. It's become an epic collaboration. And it started off like lots of different projects started off through COVID. And um, I was working with Scott Pickett when he had just acquired Long Grain. And I rang him and I said, oh, I can't, I'm sick of all the food I can get within a 5K radius. You've just acquired Long Grain. How about we do a box. It was before Providor and all that, that, that stuff. And I said, let's, let's do a box. You can um, design the, the, the gelato flavors based around, you know, the concept of long grain and we'll put the two together, two great brands and let's just see what happens. And it was a huge success. But what I found most interesting was the chefs and uh, the the chef's approach to gelato, which is really different to a pastry chef. The flavors just packed the biggest punch. It was phenomenal. Like it's the kind of thing where, um, you know, that they design a, a, a flavor that they create a quenelle with and just pop it as an element on the plate. Mm. And so it really needs to have, you know, it really needs to be full of flavor. And so that's what the outcome was with his three flavors. And I was fascinated with how his thought process went into those flavors. And from there, I just thought I need to work I need to work with more chefs. How can I do that? What can I do? And I came up with the the idea of eight chefs in eight weeks. And I just wrote down a list of chefs that I thought were kind of cool. And I just wrote them in in, DM on Instagram. I was like, hi, I'm Sandra. I don't know if you know who Piccolina is, but you know, would you, I've got this idea, would you consider working with us? And the emails, the texts just came straight back. The DMs came straight back. And they're like, of course we know who Piccolina is. And yes, we would love to do this. So who were some of those first chefs? Um, Tom Serafian, Shannon Martinez, um, Aaron Turner. um, Star power. Yeah. It was, I mean, I just picked people that I thought were really just doing amazing things. Yeah. And they all said yes. And I was blown away. I still am blown away. I know it sounds funny, but when people know who we are, know what we do and respect what we do and actually want to work with us. Yeah. I'm I like, bet it's also amazing. a fun opportunity for them. It's something they don't get to do every day where they get to put their creative juices, yep. you know, to work in a different way. Yeah, definitely. And my approach to any project that we work on, I'm not trying to restrict them. It comes from a place of creativity because I see what the chefs do and what they, um, how they work and they are super, super creative. So it's about fostering that creativity and helping to bring their ideas to life. How close to the, maybe the first idea that they come up with is the, is the final outcome? Like, do you find that they come up with an idea and it kind of works straight away or does there have to be quite a bit of massaging to make the flavors work or the ideas work or to get it to be? What, you know, because you've got a really high quality yeah. standard. Yeah. So, yeah, how long does it kind of take to get from idea and conception to actually creating yeah. the flavours? Yeah. It, look, they really look to to me for guidance on what has worked in the past, um, on what is possible. And, um, you know, we've, we've found that that we're able to give them some guidelines, but they will come with literally hundreds of ideas and and I can just then look at the ideas and visualize how it will resonate with the customer. Right. And then I, I sort of can guide them into what I think 
will work. And also, of course, flavours that might work together on a plate in a hot dish or a entree are not necessarily going to be the same in a frozen, yeah, in a frozen version. Equally, we can reconceptualize an entree or an appetizer or something like that. And one example of that is um, the work that we did with Ross um, for Sarai for this series. Uh, I went to his restaurant and he gave me, he played it up, the, the little wonton with the pineapple. And he said, do, do, I'm cooking this. Do you want to just try and it? And Sarai is a Filipino restaurant for those who might not know. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. And so he, and I, it was just a, would you like to try it? And I said, oh yeah, let, let me try it. It had nothing to do with necessarily where the series was was going or what one of the dishes he was going to um, create. But I ate it and I said, oh, this is phenomenal. Oh my God. Mm. Can you make that into one of the flavours? And he's like, are you serious? How? And I said, can we just, can I need my customers to eat that wonton? Like, ha- so let's ha- do it. So how do you translate those flavours then into an ice cream? I'm assuming it just feels like, is it a savoury taste or a sweet taste? Well, that's the beauty in it, is that the, the cup of gelato, it's it's sweet, but it has those savoury notes. And, um, you know, the, there is a, literally a little wonton with the, the pineapple salsa and the caviar on top. And then we've he designed the gelato that went with it that was cu- custom designed to marry back with it. And you you literally are eating... An actual wonton. An actual wonton. As in a savoury wonton. As in a savoury wonton okay. with um, the pineapple salsa that has all the beautiful sauces and all everything with the caviar on top and then it's paired back with the gelato. So it's like they're like gastronomic desserts. Little... A little meal. A little meal. Let's talk about the rest of the chefs, though. I mean, the lineup is pretty incredible. You've got Brigitte Hefner from Tedesca. Yeah. Um, please tell us about some of the other chefs you've got involved. Yeah, we've got um, Norni from Mabu Mabu, um, Ellie Hope Street Radio. We have uh, Charlie from Clover Wine, Ella, author of Ella Ella. Oh, oh Joshkin from Tulum. I miss Joshkin. So what is the gelato like that is going to take us to Tulum? So he's done um, one dessert that was is his fame, it was his signature dessert, um, and that's the the chicken pudding with the kadayif and it's topped with a caramel, um, like a whipped caramel cream and cinnamon and it's just, when he told me about it, I was like, okay, okay, chicken. Okay, all right. This is chicken and gelato. Unique. Let's. And he's just trust. It's just going to be amazing. And I said, I, yeah, I trust you, but <clears throat> this is, you know, like it's going to be challenging yeah. for our customers. But okay. And he said, come to the restaurant. I'll plate it up for you, and you can taste it. You just need to taste it. And I did, and I was, I was just floored. It was really amazing, really delicious. I'd love to know what Brigitte's got on um, in terms of her ingredients and flavours because she's such a talented chef. She's all about those beautiful kind of local ingredients. Yeah, Brigitte is a, was a pleasure to work with. She did so much of her own testing in her kitchen um, before she even sort of came to us with the final ideas. It was definitely a true collaboration because we needed to kind of work with her ideas and then translate that into something that, um, we could serve in store. So Brigitte um, based her three flavours on her time spent in three different places in the world. So Sicily, Jerusalem and Sri Lanka. And so when you um, experience those cups of gelato, you are definitely transformed or transported back to those um, places in the world. And um and it's it's amazing how she did that. Uh, I think one of them, um, the Sicily, definitely with the the ricotta and goat's milk gelato. I want to check my notes so I don't get this wrong. Um, the lemon verbena sorbet. It's topped with candy, a candied mandarin, um, pine nuts, and finished with a brandy snap. And it was yeah we. The, we did lots of testing, but when we got it right, we all just kind of looked at each other and went. That's incredible. Yes. Yeah. Like that's going to be a favourite. So when does it begin, this project, and when does it end? 
Yeah, so it begins on the 21st of June and it finishes up on the 15th of August. Okay, so it's eight weeks, but as everyone yep. should remember, you've only got one week per chef. One week per, per chef. chef. So and then it's gone. And then it's gone. Yeah. Now, before you leave, I, I can't let you leave without discussing your latest store, which is some sort of futuristic silver spirally um, construction uh, in the new social quarter at Chadston. Yeah. This looks really different to any other Piccolina store. Can you just tell us quickly about opening at Chadston and kind of what people can expect? Yeah, um, I got shivers when you said that because it is really different from anything we've done before. We're working with March Studio. Chadston at the Social Quarter, that was a really big move there and I was really unsure about, um, you know, what our place would be within the Social Quarter and, you know, how it would all turn out. But it's mm. it has been incredible. It I mean, is busy all the time. And I have watched, I have watched yeah. the lines form. You walk into the social quarter and you see the kind of gleaming silver of Piccolina. It's been a really big success. And our challenge from a design perspective was how do we, because the social, there's a lot happening in the social yeah. quarter and it was, you know, how do we stand out? And I think we decided to, to do that by just kind of being, I don't want to say quiet because it's a, it's a very impressive um, chaos, but just um, using a, you know, a singular expression of a material and just um, being contained within our little space, mm. but just shining like being like a bit of a beacon and a diamond. And I think it's achieved that and people love it. They love the brand, the product's really good. Um, and so, so I think it's all up. It's been a success. Great. Well, thanks for coming in and telling us all about the project, which I just think, you know, I think you're going to find people who are going back, if not eight times, maybe more once they find a flavor they like. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there's always a lot going on with you. I mean, you have just hinted at the fact that there's more stores coming. I'm not going to ask you about that right now, <laughs> even though I want to, but thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you very much for having me. That's all we've got time for today. As always, you can stay up to date at any time at broadsheet.com.au or on Instagram at broadsheet underscore mel. See you again next week.